Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Port Republic, located in Rockingham County, Virginia, on June 9, 1862. Confederate Major General Thomas Stonewall Jackson was recovering from his prior battles in the Shenandoah campaign. His men numbered less than 12,000 when he arrived at Port Republic, hoping to use the area to defend against the approaching Union forces. After the defense of Cross Keys earlier that day, the Confederates were attacked by Union cavalry that almost captured Stonewall Jackson and his supply train outside of town. Jackson followed up his repulsion of the Union attack by sending Confederate Colonel Samuel Fulkerson and his 37th Infantry Regiment across the bridge scattering the Union cavalry. The following morning, General Jackson ordered Confederate Brigadier General Charles Winder and his brigade to attack the Union. The Union was set up between South Fork River and Blue Ridge Mountains. The Union had utilized the river to protect the right flank, and on their left flank was a knoll known as Lewiston Colian. This is where he places artillery as there was a commanding view of the area. As Winder approached, the artillery ripped the Confederate forces' right flank. At the same time, their left flank withstood a withering fire from the Union. All this halted Confederates out in the open plain. Eventually, Confederate Brigadier General Richard Taylor arrived with his Louisiana Brigade and he split his forces. One regiment to assist General Winder and the rest to attack the artillery at Lewiston Colling. Desperate to avoid a Union attack, the Confederates charged Lewiston Colling and almost made it. They were stopped just more than 100 yards away, but they held on, withstanding horrific losses. However, their ammunition ran out and eventually the Confederates started to retreat back. Just as the Union thought they were victorious, though, General Ewell arrived on the field and unexpectedly struck the Union left flank with his two regiments of infantry. At the same time, General Taylor, who was stuck in the middle to begin with, had started moving forward again and had gotten temporarily stuck in the woods near Lewiston Colling. The woods couldn't hold him back very long, though. He freed himself and they charged up the hill and captured the Union position. At this time, the Union soldiers were outnumbered and flanked, and when the Confederate artillery that was used in Lewiston Colling's position for themselves began to attack, the Union lost all morale, and they began to run. The Union line collapsed, and it resulted in the Union soldiers being chased for more than five miles. This allowed Jackson to move towards Richmond unmolested. Jackson had won, inflicting almost 1,000 killed or wounded on the Union forces, while only suffering the loss of 800 killed or wounded himself. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.